and so I thank God for that. Amen. I know some people may say, man, you're too young to sound the way you sound, but amen, it's just in my spirit to say it's another day's journey. Amen. And I'm so glad. Amen. It's another day's journey. Amen. God has given me another chance. Oh, come on here. Because I told somebody on my job just this week that, yes, I'm at a young age, but I should have died a long time ago. Amen. No, it was on my job. I was telling someone in front of mine. Amen. I, and, and I don't say that to, to try to sound like one of the saints. I said it because it's my testimony. Amen. I should have died a long time ago. But God's grace and mercy. Amen. He has kept me this far. Amen. Amen. So I don't take it for granted. Amen. Even if you look at it from a uh, a uh, from a probability standpoint. Amen. Um, average young black males don't make it past 20, 21, 22. Amen. And so I thank God that God allowed me to be one out of many. That is being able to say that I am reaching my mid-twenties. Amen. Amen. I thank God for that. Amen. And I'm so excited. Amen. But there's still a journey. Amen. There is still yet a journey to be had. And this takes us now to our subtopic. Subtopic tonight is ready is daily. Ready is daily. Father, tonight we tell you thank you. God, I thank you. I thank you for this day. I thank you for what you've done. Thank you for how you kept my mind. God, I thank you. And I give you glory. I ask you, God, to have your way on tonight. God, you say what you want to say. You do what you do best, and let's be gone. Father, I give you the glory. I ask you for the anointing that makes whatever you would have us to do tonight possible, but that also our spirits, our minds will be receptive to what you, Holy Spirit, has to say. Father, I thank you that your word will not just penetrate our hearts and our minds and our attention span to this moment, but I thank you that your word will continue to stay in our mind, that we will be doers of the word, that we will live out the word, that the word will take on flesh. Father, for this I give you glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Tonight you'll find us in Matthew chapter 25. And I do want to apologize to the members. Uh, more specifically, Mother Vanessa in our group chat. Amen. She asked last night where we were coming from, and I yet did not know. And so I had a feeling this was the direction that we were going in, but I like to make sure I hear God. I like to make sure that I'm in the direction of what He is saying. And so if I tell you, uh, you know, this is where we're going. God is likely to switch it up. All right. And God has been known to scrap everything I've studied and tell me to go in another direction. Amen. And so, and so, um, yeah. So please, but Mother Vanessa and those that were looking forward to knowing where we were going tonight, please Amen. forgive me. Amen. But tonight we'll be coming out of Matthew chapter 25. I'm going to reference a few chapters in this book. I plan on referencing a little bit of chapter 22, a little bit of, a little bit of chapter 23, 24, but tonight we'll be coming from 25. So you'll kind of see where how this kind of goes. Amen. But again, our subtopic for tonight is ready is daily. Ready is daily. It's simple, but it's what God gave me. I wanted, I wanted to think of something a little more deep. A little something more intriguing, but he gave me these simple words. And as I allow these words to digest in my spirit, Apostle, I understand that these words um, really don't need to be deep to be powerful. 
You don't have to sound smart to be to uh, have heard God. Amen. But again, ready is daily. Ready is daily. Ready is daily. Ready is daily. I'm saying it over and over again. Thank you, musicians. Ready is daily. Ready is daily. I, I keep saying it because um, I don't want this to just be a subtopic. I don't just I don't want this to just be one of many subtopics that you have known and that you have heard. But I want this to really penetrate your spirit. I want this, and 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 I'm looking online and I see my aunt on here, Overseer Lucas. Amen. I thank God for your auntie joining on tonight. Amen. Amen. Um, but ready is daily. Ready is daily. It is a daily decision yes. to be ready. Amen. And uh -huh. um, and I and I often have to be reminded, Sister Esther, that I am not. And I'm talking from. My, I'm talking as I'm talking. I'm talking as if I'm talking just about me, but I'm talking to everyone. But oftentimes, Pastor Michelle, God has to remind me: um, don't get disturbed or don't get thrown off by what's happening around you, what's happening in the world, the hustle and bustle of life, that you forget what your purpose is and why you're here and why you are living saved and why I have saved you Amen. and Lord. what you are trying to uh, avoid yes. because the goal is to be with God and avoid hell All right. All right. and more of the focus should be being ready and prepared for his return yes. and for his coming back and not just ready for his coming back but ready for our leaving because we can leave at any moment in time. Because we are not promised tomorrow. We're not promised to see another day. But And I know, see, I'm going to get into the scriptures in a moment. Because I'm only going to read a few of it. It's a familiar passage. For those that don't know what these scriptures are about, Matthew 25, verse 1, is a parable talking about the bridegroom. Five lives, five foolish. But let me get there. Um, oftentimes, I have to be reminded that, uh, uh, and, and I'm just letting you into my personal space of what God reminds me of. Jesus. That yes, you are trying to prepare for certain things in your earthly vessel. Uh -huh. You're trying to make sure that you are becoming established as an adult. That you uh, have enough money to do what you need to do. That things are in order. That things are lined up and in place. And and and, and 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 if we're not careful, that can become the center focus. In so much to where, when we talk about God, it is always encompassed around what I can get from God. All right, all right. And as easy as it is to be focused on that, it can cost one to spend more time and effort on preparation down here ah. to the point where you won't have what you need <laughs> in preparation for where you're looking to go. Where you going? Where you going? <laughs> Amen. Amen. Even today, even today, and, and, I, and I'm getting to the text, but even today, over St. Lucas, I was looking at my finances, figuring out some things. I Amen. was looking at bills to come and bills that need to be paid now and certain expenses and things of that nature and, 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 and just trying to make sure that I have what I need so I can do what needs to be done and Amen. making sure that when the time does come for me to splurge that Amen. I won't be splurging on bill money and <laughs> just making sure that things are lined up and in yeah. place and yeah. Trying to also juggle the mind, the mentality of Jonathan, well, you can't just work a nine to five and not put time into your actual career in what God gave you as far as uh, 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 being an entrepreneur and being an author and being a songwriter. These are different aspirations that God, I believe God has placed on the inside of me. And oftentimes you can just be so focused on those things. Yeah. Oh, God. Hallelujah. 
wanting to prepare for a family, wanting to not say that there's any child on the way. Praise the Lord. But you are preparing and you're trying to make sure. And, and can I just be real frank and I'm going to just I'm gonna get out of the way. But even today, the end of my door shy. But the enemy tried to grip my mind. The enemy even tried to grip my mind over Sir Lucas and had me thinking about the fact that I'm turning 25 tomorrow. And the fact that there are things that I said that I would, oh, I got to yeah, 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 yeah. talk back to me. But there were things that I said I wanted to accomplish by a certain time. And just looking at things, and it's just like, okay, well, uh, come on. Hey, yeah, hey, yeah. These things have right. been completed. Right. In five years, I'll be 30. You know how the enemy does. Right. Right. That's right. And now have you in a, in a, in a sense of anxiety, yeah. amen, amen, amen. in a sense of frustration, even yeah. fear grips you. Yes. Yeah. What if I don't reach the time frame that I had in mind? And, 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 and because one of the things that I have regretted even coming into my 20s. Yeah was I played around a lot. Uh-huh. All right. All right. Oh, I'm going to just be transparent. I don't know, I'm not studying that. <laughs> so I'm realizing that now time is of the essence. And at the same time that I'm trying to juggle the goals that Jonathan is looking to reach, I am also making sure that my prime or I understand that my primary focus must still, at the end of the day, be hear him say, well done. I, I slowed it down at that last point because I was hoping y'all were going to come in and join him. Anyway. So I'm going to give you another chance to, to, to hear him say, well done. done. I'm being transparent and, and I'm taking my time in my uh, 27 minutes before we close, I'm taking my time and I'm getting into this because I want to really allow reality to set in. I want you to feel this. I want you to not just look at my life, but look at where you are and how the enemy can 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 manipulate your sight. Oh, I'm, I'm going somewhere. I'm going somewhere. The enemy can manipulate your sight and to make you feel like you are off your mark, off your square, trying to make you feel discouraged about certain things that you miss. Because let me say this and be real transparent. There are times where people will say in moments like this one, oh, well, you haven't missed anything. You're not behind. Truth be told, let's be real. Some of us, we are behind in some things. Oh, yeah. 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 Some of us, we should have accomplished some things oh, yes. a while ago. That's right. Oh, yes. You're right now. However, like I oftentimes tell people is, as long as there's breath in your body, yes. there's always a chance to get oh. it right to start over or so some people start again. Yes. Reset. Hallelujah. While there is still time, if you are paying attention to the words, that I'm saying tonight, you should see the direction of where we're going in the text. Because the enemy, the job of the enemy is to let you know you have time, but to keep you in a place of not doing anything while in time. Because oftentimes, Pastor Michelle, I've noticed that how the enemy can really trick somebody is by telling them a little bit of truth laced with bad intentions. Oh, yeah. oh Jesus. Oh, yeah. I'm going to tell you the truth, but it's laced with bad intentions. I'm telling you the truth, but in all actuality, I'm trying to manip- manipulate you into laziness. All right. Yes. All right. All right. All right. Child, you know you got time. You you young. What you, what you, what you talking about? You want to get married? No, I tell people often, no, your boy wants to be It is my desire. To be married, to be a father, yeah. to be a husband, yeah. Yeah. to be a husband and a father. Amen. Yeah. Praise That's the Lord. Get a wife, get a wife. Hallelujah. Give them, give them, give them. 
It is my desire. I'm just, I'm just talking about, I can't talk for nobody. Else. I'm just talking about me. But one of the things I said maybe two Bible studies ago, or maybe it was a Sunday morning Bible uh, uh, Sunday school, and it was something like this. God had to remind me, and you know, he had to straight rebuke me and tell me, uh, 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 stop being so focused on what you want and want me. Because if I give you what you want before your desire to want me gets where it need to be, and you mess around and get that thing, I might mess around and move it out the way. You want to be married so bad to the point where God don't get the attention that he deserves, but, but the love and the kindness that he's placed in your heart, you mess around and you give that to man before you give it to God first. Oh, I got and mess around and God end up taking who he made. Okay, come here, Adam and Eve. Let's not act like this thing can't happen. So now, uh, I, I see, part of me really want to just cut across the fence on these scriptures, but the question that has to become, what is your excuse for you not having oil? Because the t okay, let me. I'm, I'm gonna read it right quick. I don't. I plan on only reading to like verse seven or eight, and then we'll get into this. Verse one, Matthew twenty-five. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins. This is a metaphorical, but also a real parable, because. Uh, uh, and again, I don't want to bore you, but I did the study, so I might as well share with you what I have. Uh, Jesus told this particular story, and in Matthew 22, 23, 24, and in 25 where we are, uh, it was considered a high honor in Jewish custom to be, uh, 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 to be, to be, to be invited to a wedding. Talk back to me. It was an honor to be invited to a wedding. Weddings were highly esteemed in their time. Weddings were high notoriety. They were the top thing. If somebody said there was a wedding going on and you got an invite, everybody in their mama wanted to go. And so this is why Jesus used this example because what he let them know is the same way that you prepare for a wedding, the same way that you prepare for something that you want to be at. Oh, I, I just I wish you would just catch it. The same way you prepare for somewhere you want to go for a for a goal you want to accomplish. Um, let's go in time where it is always known for a woman to have visualized even around the age of six, seven, eight, nine, Negro teacher of seeing themselves in a wedding dress, uh, of seeing themselves uh, uh, with tall, dark, and handsome, maybe short, uh, fat, whatever the case may be. Uh, they have always seen themselves married and they have been preparing since a child. And now, because oh, I feel teach real good, God, excuse me. Uh, they have been preparing for such a long time because uh, uh, they were looking forward uh, to being in that dress, to being in that position of now I am transitioning from being just a woman to now being a wife. It was something to look forward to. Even in our day to day, though the society and what you see on TV will show you that everybody is just out here looking to just 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 hunch and and, and run and, and just and just and just do and and, and, and just and just one night like stand this and shake this and but I promise you one thing that God has allowed me to see is that when you really sit down and talk with people, not with watching TV, when you sit down and talk with people, the thing they never say it's marriage, they never say it's a covenant, but when you hear them talk about what they want, it sounds like you want relationship. Amen. 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 But even in order for you to have a relationship of that magnitude, one must prepare. All right, God's a man. That's right. God's a man. Everybody must be prepared. 
Even in so much Apostle Christ, there have been some who have already bought their wedding dress, already bought their tux, and they may have gained a few pounds, and they made it in their mind, this is not only my dream dress, but I don't have the money to buy another, so I'm going to lose the weight for what I want. Oh, I'm, I'm getting somewhere. I'm going to get this bad boy. This is what I want. I'm not, now hear me very well. I am not saying that it is not appropriate for one to desire certain things and to be in certain positions in life. Those things are great. But the purpose of what I'm now drawing out is do we have the same ready mindedness? I know that's not a word, but I made it a word. Amen. For the return of Christ. Oh, God. Is our mind in the because, oh, God, I, I really want to talk this thing out, but I, I'm going to read it. I promise you. But even when I did my study on the oil, the oil in this text represents the Holy Ghost. Somebody said the Holy Ghost. And not only that, but the type of candles that they had, they didn't even have candles. When you look at what, when you do your study, you'll find that this, uh, that the wedding, that this wedding that Jesus was describing was what they call a torch ceremony, where they would take a, 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 a sticks with a towel on it and dip it in wax and then light the top of it on fire. And they would have a torch, this is Jewish custom, but they would have a, a, a torch light. It wouldn't be a candle, it was a torch. All right, all right, all right. Thank you, thank you, thank you. But in order to make sure that they had the appropriate amount of oil, they had to prepare since they knew the wedding was on the way. Mm. There are three, huh, there are three, I, I, I know, I know I'm, I'm probably boring some of y'all with this, right? But there are three different ceremonial processes of a Jewish wedding. Mm. And what this text would describe is that they were getting ready for the last and final phase of said wedding, Negro teaching. And the last part of the wedding was everybody's now in place, everybody's ready, everybody has their oil, their candlesticks. But the thing is now, you're waiting on the bridegroom to come and get the bride. Now follow me here. I don't really have the time to get into it like I want to and to prove it like I want to, but we have taught this thing incorrectly. Prophet, what do you mean? We have taught that the ones, the five wives that have oil only had enough for themselves. That is actually wrong. What they had was, when you say it, they actually had extra oil. Hmm. And what they were letting the five foolish know is, uh, 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 I, I have enough that is required, hmm. but I also have extra. Huh. And what that now speaks to is, I prepared over and above to make sure that if anything happens in this way, if there is a longer procession of the wedding, if this thing proceeds longer than, uh, than expected, if any hiccups or anything happen, once my torch is lit, I'm not running out of oil. I got enough to hold me longer than expected. I have enough to hold me longer than expected. Verse 1, then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. All ten, but not the same mindset. Right. Ten virgins, two different mindsets. That's right. And I promise you, I'm going to go a lot deeper than where I am now. This is, I'm just covering the surface at the moment. Amen. I got 15 more minutes to work. Amen. And five of them were wise and five were foolish. Verse 3, they that were foolish took their lamps mm -hmm. 
and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. All right. All right. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. Uh -huh. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. Verse 7. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. Yeah. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone. Out, but the wise answer saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you. But go ye rather to sell, or go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. So, what this now, and I told you I'm only going to read a few of these verses, but I need to get, I need to do a little digging in my, in my 14, 13 minutes now. We are on a fast right now. Hmm? Mm -hmm. And the Lord was telling me, I said, God, I said, now I know that this particular text has been in my spirit, but I said, Lord, I want to make sure that this is what you want to talk about. And, 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 and it was a little, I had a little tussle for a minute. But I finally found my way where he wants to talk about what he wants to talk about, and that's this. We have to understand that we are better together, even, and I'm even picking up on what we talked about these last two Wednesdays. All right. We are, we are, we are much stronger with help oh, yeah. than we are by ourselves. Oh, yeah. okay. Because here's the thing: the five wives, the Bible says there were ten total. Uh -huh. Ten total who had lamps. Ten total who know how to trim them and burn them. Yeah. Ten total who had the same preparation method, but not the same execution. All ten knew what to do, knew how to prepare. It's not that anybody didn't know, but everybody chose how they wanted to do what they were doing. So now the question has become, who are we allowing ourselves to be surrounded by? Because here it is, even in the text where we read in the Bible where it says, and I want to say it's in Matthew either 23 or 24, where it talks about many are called, few are chosen. Even in that text, Jesus is speaking another parable about a wedding. And in that parable, he was talking about, see, I told you I was going to jump around a little bit. But even in that parable, he was talking about a, 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 those who would go out, or those that were supposed to go out, and tell others, hey, come to the wedding. Because many people are called, were called to that particular wedding. But only few were chosen. In other words, everybody heard about it. But one who is chosen is the one that is based upon how you prepare. Yes, that's right. That's the verse. Cho oh, I just, um, mm -hmm. Chosen people, it is not necessarily based upon uh, who you are, what family you come from, none of that. But it's based upon how you respond. Yes, that's right. How are you preparing yourself? Are you coming around those that are strong enough to hold you as well as you can hold others? No, my God, my God. Because I believe that all five of the wives had to encourage one another. Hey, I know you're getting tired. I know you you might be a little weary, but listen, we still got to prepare. We still got work to do. And see, we have to make sure that we are cautious because here it is. Let me let me let me give you Jonathan's translation. All ten were in the same church, but here are different messages. Amen. Hmm. Because here it is. Now uh, uh, we have to understand that as we are a family, we're not. We're yes, we are the building of a church, but we are a body of Christ. Amen. And so we have to understand how important it is. That we pray together. Yes. Oh, yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. That we encourage one another. Mm -hmm. This is why I have been focusing on this subject for the last. This is why the Holy Ghost has had me focusing on this subject for the last three weeks. Yes. 
on the power of being one, on the power of being one. together. One. Because before we can go out and, and, and want to encourage somebody else and pour into somebody else, hey, you can't do that if you're running on halfway full. Because, okay, let me talk to some of you black people. Let me talk to y'all for a minute. Because what we'll do, we got a car, right? And, and some of us will first get paid. I did it today, Lord, forgive me. But we'll first get paid, right? And, and, and we'll put $10 in the tank. I'm not full. Oh, y'all better catch my preach. I'm not full, but I got enough to get where I'm trying to go. But because of how I am prepared, I'm going to have to make multiple stops to the gas station throughout the next coming days instead of just filling myself up. Because I make, because some of us, we only fill our cars up when we know we got to travel somewhere. Oh, I wish y'all would talk back to me. Uh, but here's the thing. You never know what might happen. You never know what emergency. I'm talking logical, but you got to hear me spiritual. You never know what emergency might take place. You never know where you got to jump and go in the middle of the night. You don't know. Uh, you might have to pick up your phone and drop everything and drive three hours uh, out the way. You can't stop. You can't, you can't do nothing but go. And if you are not ready, you cannot be dependable to be called on. That's right. Yes. That's the point. That's the point. That because watch this. Let me say this because this revelation came in our meeting the other night. But I'm gonna say it here tonight and hope that five people catch it. And that's this. Even a tow truck needs gas. Yeah. Even what is designed to help others yeah. need help yeah. itself. So we got to be like-minded, chosen people or have to be connected with chosen people. Because just like I told you, many of us are so used to being the one that's being called on. But here's the issue. What we do is we will uh, say, well, you know what? I'm just going to keep being strong over here in my corner. No, Negro, you, we call for help. Yes, Get them help. Pray for y'all. Pray for me. Because if you're not careful, if you don't get it right now while we're talking about the body, when we're going to talk about evangelism and you still haven't got this down while talking about being together, you and I have the probability and the possibility to be like the sons of Stephen trying to take on something without the proper help to get the job done. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And please hear me very well, those that are watching. Please don't take my loud talking and, and, and angry light gestures as I'm angry. I'm just passionate. Amen, amen, amen. I promise you I'm not angry. I don't know. I'm not upset. Amen. Amen. I'm old. Have your tank full, not halfway. Because here it is. Let me say this and hope you catch it. Halfway is good enough for you. But you don't know who the other half of the tank may be for. This is why one of the things that I really want us to get and understand, and, 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 and even as we were on the prayer call the other night, I was listening to the verbiage of some of the saints, and I understood, yes, God is finally getting the message across to some of our people, and that's this. It is imperative that in your walk with God, you don't forget servitude. The Bible says that the greatest among you is the who? The servant. That's right. Come on. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank what you. am I saying? Thank you. There is an understanding to this thing that when you understand 
that you are a part of a body, that you are a part of something where, or you are a part of the body of Christ, not something, but you're a part of the body of Christ, you understand that my number one goal, or my only goal is not just me making it to heaven. Yes, that's right. But my goal must be, who do I pull in to come along? Let's thank God for co pastor. Because here it is. Let me say this as I close in my next four minutes, and that's this. We must understand that if your only focus is just you, 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 me, 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 this is what I got going on, I'm going through, I need enough oil for me, then you have missed the goal. Or you have missed the purpose That's right. of what salvation is supposed to be about. Amen. All right. Our job is to be a full tow truck. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. I think that should have been the subtopic. Right. 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 A full tow truck. Yeah. Right. I got enough for me, That's right. and I got enough to help right. somebody else. Yeah. Right. Well, I'm coming to you. Because here it is, let me say this. Because God does care about what you need. He cares about that. Amen. All right. All right. And the thing about it is, I challenge us, even as we are in this time of consecration, to see the Lord and say, God, show me what you need out of me, but help me also see what I need to see so I can prosper in this life. God, most importantly, I want to live a life pleasing in your sight so when you come, I'll be ready. But God also opened up my mind and my understanding so that I can prosper and be in health even as my soul prospers. Yeah. 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 Thank you, Lord. God also, here's another prayer you can add. God also helped me be a true disciple. Because a true disciple don't, a true disciple learns one thing uh, of, of that's very primary, and that's this. The root word of disciple is discipline. Yes. So one must learn discipline in order to disciple. Yeah. You didn't catch what I just said. Yeah. One must learn discipline yeah. in order to disciple. <laughs> push, push, push rewind, now push play. One must learn discipline in order to now go out and disciple. We have to know how to, we have to allow God to show us how to master our this flesh. How to master pushing our plate aside when the time comes. How to master our mouth. How to master our finances. See, and I told us even going into this Bible study series that it would be about evangelism. Amen. But how inappropriate would it be for us to want to evangelize to other people and we not have the, 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 the wherewithal to be the tow truck we need to be? Because had we have gone, had we have gone straight into talking about evangelism, evangelism in this series, we would have messed around and been a full-blown tow truck with only a quarter of a tank. I go back to the oil analogy. Because oil, as I did my study called Pastor Oil, has different has different has different uh, functions. Oil can help make certain surfaces slick so mold and grease and gook don't get on things. Oil also has the capacity to help something burn and to stay lit. Yes. Oil also has the capacity to, uh, and I was looking it up earlier, I had it on here, but oil also has the capacity to, 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 uh, 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 Give me, I know I'm, I'm messing with this screen here, but let me look at it because I found this really good. Car. You got to bring your car. One but oil, one freaking, freaking, freaking. oil has the capacity. Here we go. Oil lubricates. That's right. That's it. That's it. 
The olive oil represents the Holy Spirit for many reasons. Oil lubricates when used for that purpose. There is little friction and wear among those who are lubricated by the Spirit of God. Oil heals and was used as a medicinal treatment in Bible times. The Spirit of God brings healing and restoration. Oil lights when it is burned in a lamp. Where the Spirit of God is, there is light. Oil warms when it is used as fuel for a flame. Where the Spirit of God is, there is warmth and comfort. Oil invigorates when used to massage. The Holy Spirit invigorates us for his service. Oil adorns when applied as a perfume. The Holy Spirit adorns us and makes us more pleasant to be around. I said it makes us more pleasant to be around. Oil polishes when used to shine metal. The Holy Spirit wipes away our grime and smooths out our rough edges. This is everything I've said this morning. The Holy Spirit works on you first. Amen. Then it said, how will you know them? You shall know them by the fruit Amen. that they bear. This is why, Sister Esther, something that the Holy Spirit used me to speak in this house maybe a year or so ago, and as often as the Holy Spirit reminds me to remind us of this, I do so, and that's this. Evidence of the Holy Ghost is not you speaking in tongues. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, the, the evidence of, of one having the Holy Ghost is not you speaking in tongues. Amen. Well, well, prophet, what about Acts chapter 2 where it says that they spoke in other tongues? Yes, they did. The Bible says that they that they spoke with other with other tongues and they had the evidence, but it is not the evidence. Somebody may say, well, that's kind of confusing. In other words, all because you have oil don't mean you're using it. All right, all right, all right. All right. Okay, let me say it like this. All because your car is, 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 doesn't have, all because uh, uh, you have light to burn in a lamp doesn't mean that it's oil. All, right. all because you uh, 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 use some kind of liquid to be healed it doesn't mean that it's oil. All because uh, you are warmed, uh, all because you are warmed and you have a type of fuel, it does not mean that that fuel is oil. All because uh, 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 you smell like oil, it does not necessarily mean that it is oil. But the true evidence of the Holy Ghost is found in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22, which is the fruit of the Spirit. Speaking in tongues is a sign of having the Holy Ghost. But I know people with the Holy Ghost who ain't never spoken in tongues. Look at y'all looking at me and I'm looking right back at y'all. I know people that walk in the fruit of the Spirit and I ain't never heard them speak in tongues not one time. And there's some people, because I feel you help, there's some people that I've met that walk out love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, meekness, a long suffering, and they ain't never he come asunder, but they walk out and they have more fruit than those that he come asunder. Look at y'all, look at me, I'm looking right back at y'all. My choice, my choice, my choice. Not your choice, your own God's choice. He know you want to use him. Take into consideration. He know you want to use him. Oil polishes when used to shine metal. The Holy Spirit wipes away our grime and smooths out our rough edges. For many of us, our finances are some of those rough edges. As I'm coming to my close, for some of us, it is the, the it is it is trying to uh, uh, live out some of the mistakes we've made. Amen. Jesus, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. 
For some of us, it is now trying to just get our head above water. All right. Yes, 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 Lord. But I want to encourage you and remind you that even God played a part in helping people even with their finances. Can I take you on a two-minute journey and remind you of Peter when Jesus and Peter had taxes to be paid? Can I remind you of that for a moment? And Jesus told Peter, hey, go look at that fish. It's enough to pay my taxes and yours. Can I tell you that God's concerned about your health? Because I'm not no Shia. Because Jesus, what he did on the cross, it wasn't just for your soul salvation. But I did I'm my soul I'm my But even Isaiah said that that he was wounded for my transgression. Bruised, I just wish I had a church. Bruised for my iniquity and the chastisement of my peace was upon him and by here's the health part and by his stripes I am healed well prophet what about anxiety I mean I, that's just my biggest fight right now the bible says to cast your cares on him Wait, prophet, that word, it didn't say anxiety, but when you do your study on what he meant by care, he was talking about anxiety because you become anxious. One can become anxious about what they care about. You see it? The Bible also says to be anxious for nothing. Shambles. My house is just seems like everything falling apart. Falling apart. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. You need another scripture? Okay, let me give you a whole story. Because I let everybody know a preach to it. And if five people don't catch this, I've messed up this next point, and that's this. Out of so many people that know a preach to, God made sure because his immediate family obeyed, his immediate family were saved. See, that's what I need you to throw up in the devil's face whenever he tries to discourage you. You got to remind him of what God has done. A songwriter said it like this. While you're taking, while you're telling God about your problems, you need to tell your problems about your God. And just because I want to feel a little churchy, and when I think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he past it has done for me, I can presently look to the future and I can respond not being there yet but presently say my soul cries out hallelujah thank God for saving me The time is coming and now is as I close that we must make sure that we are not just doing enough. But we need to, the Bible says to mark the perfect man and behold the upright for the end of that man is peace. Prophet, why did you quote that scripture? Simply because I now need you to hear the indicator. When you find that there are people in your circle, in your church, whatever have you, in your prayer group, in your neighborhood Bible study group, that are going through the same, if not similar, trials, tribulations, tests as you are, but they're reacting differently, you must now find out what is your secret. Oh, I thought I was going to get a better response than that. You must now find out, hold on, you, you lost your job too? Wait, you had a foreclosure sound on your house? You were sick in your 
I said, mm -mm -mm. if I had just a few mothers on this on this front row, me and these mothers would tear this whole front section of the church up. When you see, mm -hmm, uh, you were sick in your body too, and you prayed and God healed you by the time you got to the doctor's office. Uh, see, when you find out people who has done what they needed to do to have the oil that they have, don't ask them for their oil, ask them for their strategy. How? No, no, because I, I feel preach. How did you stay afloat when you went through the divorce? How did you how did you, how did your mind stay together when you found out that your child was strung out on drugs? How did you keep it together when you got a pay cut on your child? How did you keep your mind together uh, having this going on, that going on? Child, uh, uh, your now child has made you a grandparent earlier than what they were supposed to. How do you now deal with this? Your son, your nephew is now in prison. And now, but you told me that God did it for your child. How do I have that same faith? Because child, let me tell you, it wasn't, it wasn't in me having oil. I had to have extra. Because I did not know what tomorrow would hold. But because I know who holds the future. And life is worth the living just Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. That the Bible. Now, this song, if you don't really understand, can sound contradicting the scripture. Because the Bible says, put no thought for tomorrow. But yet, in the song it says, because it lives, I can face tomorrow. So what it is now saying as a believer is, I don't know what tomorrow holds. But what I hold is for tomorrow. Y'all yeah. oh, just missed it. You 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 missed it. I'm going to drive by. I'm going to spin the block one more time and drop it off to you. Here it is. I'm your UPS driver. I'm going to drop it off to your house one more time. I don't know what tomorrow holds. But what I have currently is enough for tomorrow. That's why the enemy wants to distract your mind when you get in Bible study and out of Bible study. That's why the enemy wants to distract your mind when the word is going forth. You can focus on all the other parts of the service, but when the word comes forth and now somebody asks you what did the pastor preach about, the enemy has snatched it from your dog on mind. By the time you hit the door, the enemy has snatched it from your mind. And the thing about it is, we got to understand some of these seasoned saints and some of these, even some of the young saints uh, who finally get it. Sometimes you got to take notes. Sometimes uh, you got to highlight in your Bible. Uh, you got to go out of here. And if five people jump in here, I'm a great show up. Uh, because I remember even the mothers back in the day, uh, they would say, even after the preaching and preach, they would say, I'm about to go home and study this. I wish I had some help in here. They would go home after service uh, and go back over the sermon and go back over the scriptures uh, because I don't want to just eat it once. Uh, it's too good to just enjoy it once. I got to eat it twice. Uh, I got to I got to eat this thing again and again and again uh, because I know that me just hearing it one time, uh, that ain't enough. I, I can't just read the Bible once a day. Uh, I just can't go over the sermon one time. No, I got to rehearse this thing. I need this thing to flow in my mind over and over and over again uh, because the Bible says uh, Psalms 1 1, uh, uh, 242, to, to not. Uh, in Psalms chapter 1, verse 1, what did it say? It says, uh, uh, it says what now? Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standing in the way of the sinner, nor sitting in the seat of the swamp, but uh, he that delighted himself uh, in the law of the Lord. Uh, both day and night, you must meditate uh, on the law of the Lord. Meditate. Uh, no, it's not enough to just hear the sermon one.
need to encourage somebody else. No, hear that, hear that statement, hear that statement. Because there are inner times when I myself I had an experience even yesterday. I was low. I was in a low place. Actually, no. I wasn't in a low place. I was frustrated. I was angry, Sister Esther. We all go down. We all get down. But I had to make a stop by Dollar General. And I ran into a saint that needed a little oil. And though emotionally I was in a place, God allowed me to see, though you may feel low, though you may feel angry, I need you to know that you got a little reserve in the tank. Oh, Jesus. And what I did not know is by the time I walked about a dollar general, one of the people of the body of Christ, we didn't go to the same church. I did not really know her, but she knew me through my mama. But the point is, is that I was able to share oil because I had extra. And Sister Esther, what I'm learning is that you can't have salt. You can't have just salt oil. You can't have enough. You got to have extra. Extra, extra. Read all about it. Because if I have enough for myself, that much may not be enough. So I got to have something left over. I got to have some scripture boiling in my mind. I got to have something in the chamber. Because I might need a lifeline. And the lifeline might not necessarily be for me. It might be for somebody else. But because I have prepared five wise, five foolish, even in times of being weary, I didn't faint. Be not weary in well doing. For in due season you shall reap if you faint not. It's got to come to a point as we close. Because I'm not going to let y'all preach me like you did last week. Not happening. <laughs> but there's got to come a point, people of God, where you and I must understand that uh, 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 even when we feel low, discouraged, angry, frustrated, whatever the case may be. The word of God on the inside and the assignment of a Christian, of a disciple, yes. that we all must have and do have if you are a believer, yes. has to overpower how you feel. That's right. Yes. That's a mature statement. Hallelujah. Glory to God. My assignment as a believer, I don't care about having preaching engagements, those are great to have, but I I, I don't care about those things. I don't care about if, if, if I ever get on TBN or Word Network. Those things don't matter. What matters to me is, do I hold fast to even my love covenant with God? What is a love covenant? What do you mean love covenant? The Bible says if you love me, don't just keep my commandments. But in another text with another individual, he said, if you love me, feed my sheep. That's right, man. Amen. Yes. Thank you. So love, even God's identification of love is predicated upon your own personal soul salvation, but also your assignment to reach out to somebody else. Yes. That's right. Thank you. Thank you. I'm driving these points as we appear to show and, get and go home. Oh, yeah. But I'm driving these points the as the Holy Ghost leaves me because I am smoothly transitioning into talking about evangelism. Yes. And we've been already kind of touching on it. Amen. God 
His desire is for us to be a spiritual tow truck. Do you have the capacity and the strength to carry yourself and someone else? I, and I know I'm closing, Pastor Michelle, you can close this out. But I remember I was looking on the internet the other day and I, and I, and I was listening to a clip of a preacher. I don't know his name, but, 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 but I do remember what he said. And he was saying, what if you're on your way to heaven and somebody that you passed by, knew of, whatever the case may be, sees you on your way to heaven and they'd be like, why didn't you tell me who God was? Why didn't you tell me the truth? Why didn't you tell me that there wasn't more than one way to God? Why didn't you tell me? What if we become so wrapped up and tied up in us making it, in us prospering to where we forget that our job is to be a disciple? Our job is to not only make sure that our own soul salvation is saved, but make sure that we are serving others. That we are a service to the things of God. That we are a service to somebody else. This lesson even talked about oil, the, even the smell of oil, it should make one pleasant to be around. And pleasant isn't always comfort. Oh, child, every time you come around, we have a good time. No, I don't want that to be your testimony. Yeah, we can have a good time, but I want you to also remember me and the God in me that every time I came around you and every time you came around me, anything that was not like God that was around me, in me, on me, that thing had to come up off me before I got out of your presence. I need somebody to open up their mouth and say, I'm a tow truck. Now, those of you who may be just now long and old, that don't make sense. You got to listen to the rest. But I'm a tow truck. I'm not just, I'm not, I'm not a Mercedes. I'm not anything fancy. Where only, watch this, where only one person can be pleasured by it. But I'm something that everybody can benefit from. Now you can say something different. You can say, oh, I'm a bus. I'm a train. I'm an airplane. Whatever. Amen. Let's clap and thank God for our pastor as she gets ready to close us out. Those that desire to soul giving information is in the description. Amen. That is my time. Let's clap our hands and thank God for Pastor Michelle once again. Amen. Amen. My storage is empty, and I am available to you. Now I'm giving back to you all the tools you gave to me. My hands, my ears, my voice, my eyes, so you can use them as you please. I have emptied out my cup so that you.
oh Lord, for you are our strength and you are our redeemer. And it is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you is our prayer. Hallelujah.